Welcome to lecture 18, switch statements. So switch statements are a shorthand instead of using the if else chain series like we did in a previous lecture. Basically a switch statement can switch on a certain variable or, cer or some kind of data and then you can list the possible cases that that piece of data can be. For example, if I switch on age, I can make cases saying if age is 1, then do this. If age is 2, then do that. Um, so a couple things to note with switch statements is that switch statements only can check for an exact match. So that's equality. You can't do a greater than or less than check in C sharp with the switch statement. So it has to be for an exact value. So before we go in and look at the switch statement, let's just do the example, example really quick um, of using if else statements. So you can see exactly how switch statements and the if else series differ. So let's just make a simple program that asks the user to enter in their year in high school. So what I mean by that is if you type in a one, that means you're a freshman, a two, that means you're a sophomore, three junior and four senior. So we'll just do a simple if statement. So the only way you know how to do it right now is just saying, okay, if year equals one, console dot right line freshman else if year equals two console dot right line sophomore. So that's what we're going to do first. And then we'll do the switch statement so you can see exactly the differences. So let's start off by asking the user enter year. I'm going to say int year equals int dot parse console dot read line. Now that I have it, now I can say if year equals one, console.write line, freshman. Now we can say else if year equals two. Now remember, uh, we don't want to just do plain if statements for like saying if year equals one, if year equals two, if year equals three, because your year can only be one, two, three, or four. So we don't want to do that because if it is a year one, it will still read if year equals two, if year equals three, and if year equals four. No, there's nothing there telling it that if you if one is true, the other ones can't be true. By including this else. That's what makes that tr happen. So if if year is one, like it is in this situation, it won't even check if year equals two. That's what the else says to do. So let's add else if year equals three. Junior. And then we'll do senior. So else. So now if you type in a 1, 2, 3, or 4, it will, it will say the correct text. So if I run the program, we can see if I type in 4, I'm a senior. We'll try it one more. If I type in 2, I'm a sophomore. So it's working fine. So basically, the switch statement is another way to write this functionality. Anytime you see yourself doing something like this, this is where the switch statement can be used instead. And the switch statement is used just because it's a little bit easier to read, um, and it just makes it a little bit easier to interpret. That's the reason why I like using switch statements in, the, in this situation. But always remember, you can only use a switch statement in this situation if you are checking for exact values, like I am here with a double equal sign. You can't do it with greater than and less than. If you're using anything with greater than and less than, you have to break it into an if-else series like this. You can't use the switch statement. So the syntax for the switch statement is pretty simple. It starts off by saying switch and then whatever you're switching on. So this is basically the value that I want to be able to list the possible things that that can be. So I want to switch on year. So basically I'm saying I'm going to list the possible things year can be. So that only could be one, two, three, or four. 
So in order to list those possibilities, you use cases. So I'm going to say case one colon. This is just, this is just syntax. So case one, I'm saying if year is one, then do whatever code is inside of the block for case one. So it's case one colon and then a block for that case. The last thing you need is a break and I'll explain that in a second. Then we need case two colon break case three so basically in this I'm saying if years one do this code if years two do that code three and four it's the same exact thing as this if else series where if one is selected it is not gonna go and do two three and four it's not even gonna check them once it hits this, it's going to break out of the switch statement. So it does the same behavior that you want with the if else statements. Now I simply just go and copy my code in that I want to print. And then I'm going to comment out this code just so you can see that this the switch statement code is running. So I'm going to go ahead and run that. So it says enter year. I'm going to say four and it prints senior. I'm going to say two and sophomore. So everything seems to be printing fine with that. Another thing that you can do with um, the switch statement is there's another case that says if it, it wasn't case one, case two, case three, or case four, if it was none of them, let's say they typed in five by accident. We want to be able to print to the user, oh, you entered an incorrect or an invalid number or invalid year. So in order to do that, we can use a default case. So let's have a default. And this is the case basically that says if, if none of the other cases are ran, always run the default then. But if another case is ran, it's not going to do the default. So in this, I'm going to say invalid year. So if I run that. You can see if I type in a 5, it now says invalid year. Because there is no case for 5, it will use the default. Now, we can also do that with the with the if statements. We just need to add another else at the end. I think If you think about it, it makes sense. So if I do else, then this will be the invalid year here. Because I'm saying if it's year 1, do this. If it's not, then check this. If it's not the that, check that, check that. And if it's not four, it says, okay, if this is false, do this. And if this is false, that means it wasn't any of these. And it means that means it has to be something that's not one, two, three, or four, if it ever even reaches this code. Because if it was one, two, three, or four, it would have ran this and then stopped. So if it if it ever reaches this, it's something that's not one, two, three, or four. So it's basically the same exact thing as the default case. But I'm going to go ahead and comment that out again. The last thing I want to look at with switch statements is this concept of falling through. Now, C Sharp does not support falling through. So before I can talk about falling through, I need to explain the break, why we have break in each case. Basically, what the break says to do is after it runs this case, once it hits the break, that that's saying leave the switch statement. That's basically telling it to not continue on to any other cases. Saying it, it, that basically says that it can only run one case. So by hitting break, it's going to break out of the switch statement or basically leave. So as soon as it hits the break, boom, it leaves and now continues its code from down here outside of the switch statement. However, if I try to remove the break, that now it's trying to fall through and C sharp does not support falling through other languages do like C++ and Java I believe however in C sharp it does not fall through so if I remove the break in reality in C++ and Java um, this if it was a one it would also then continue on to doing the two it would fall through to the next case but it does not do that in uh, C sharp so in C sharp you need a break the only way that you don't have to use a break is if your case has no body at all. So if I remove the whole body as a whole and say case 1 colon and then case 2, this basically just adds 1 and 2 together. It basically is like an end. It combines them together. 
So now if it is one or two, um, it will print sophomore. I can also then remove this and then now it would be one, two, and three. If it's one, two, or three, it now would print junior. So by doing that, you can give multiple cases to one block, basically. But if you have any content in the body of the case, you have to put that break in. You can't have it fall through. Actually, let me show you um, how that works. If I remove this and then run it, you'll see if I type in a 1 now, it's also going to print sophomore. So both a 1 and a 2 will print sophomore. If I run that too, it also says sophomore. So let's put that back. So that's it for this uh, lecture. In the next lecture, uh, we'll talk about two new operators. Um, one we actually saw a little bit, one you have not seen at all called the conditional operator. Um, but that's what that lecture is all about.